Hi, if you're looking for one of those YouTube videos where somebody shows you a product, endless useless features and pretty pictures, you're in the wrong place. There's plenty of views on the X920 on the internet already. I wanted to do something that focused more on empirical data. While I have access to plenty of professional film and video equipment, I wanted something compact and inexpensive to replace my phone for vacation and YouTube videos. After much research, I discovered that there were no clear winners in my price range. My number one criterion, though, minimal rolling shutter. In various online demonstrations I've seen of this camera, it seemed like the rolling shutter was fairly good. I'm actually quite impressed with it. It's not perfect, and it seems like there's some sort of electronic compensation built into it, but it's certainly better than my phone. Also, the sound is significantly better than my phone. To get an idea of the usable dynamic range, this is a standard 11 step chip chart. As you can see here, it's about 6 stops, which is not good. While I'm at it, I tested out the intelligent contrast. It seems to work by making broad details darker in bright areas, while making fine details brighter in dark areas. It's an odd effect, and I think I would like it, but it's a little too extreme for me. Now for a check of gain. At 0 dB through 6 dB, it seems to be actually quite good. At 12 and 18 dB, it's not terrible, which is good because you're going to use that setting a lot. To drive this point home, I did a shot with my traditional light meter, showing that the camera comes out at about 25 ISO. This is pathetic. The native sensitivity of the X920 is lower than their competitors, but they make up for it with a larger f-stop on the lens. The Achilles seal of this camera is too many pixels in too small of an area. The problem is that more pixels means smaller pixels, which equates to less light gathering and more noise. I would say a 3-chip version of the Canon G20 would be perfect with its 1 3rd inch 2 megapixel sensors, because 1920 by 1080 is essentially 2 megapixels. One thing that impressed me about this camera was its clarity. It resolves about 850 lines, which is more than I expected. An interesting side effect I notice is that at 1 60th shutter speed it seems to have less clarity. I don't have an explanation for this, but it's worth noting. At 60i things change a bit. The vertical resolution is significantly lower, which is to be expected on any kind of interlaced system. And the cinema mode is useless. It essentially takes a 60i video stream, converts it to 24p, and then back to 60i, or so it seems. The 3D adapter is basically a novelty item and nothing more. The resolution is well below what you can expect out of a standard definition camcorder. The optics themselves are what limit the resolution in most cases for camcorders. Another impressive aspect about this camera is how well resolution is maintained at different f-stops. It doesn't severely diminish until you get down to f-16, which is an artifact of diffraction. Also worth noting is the resolution is greater at shorter focal lengths than longer focal lengths. For kicks and giggles I tried compositing with this camera. Yes, I'm wearing a green shirt in front of a green screen, but what made it difficult is the optics and the codec. Despite the shortcomings of this camera, which are expected because of its price range, it's actually capable of producing quite nice images, especially where there's plenty of light. The color is natural. Avoid bright highlights and deep dark shadows, and you'll be fine. Perhaps my experiments are a bit of the top for a consumer grade camcorder, but I thought it also might make a good B cam for more serious projects. Now, for some pretty pictures.